Yes, I totally understand. Makes sense. In fact, if you don't have this fear, often it means you haven't haven't seen the depth of a teaching. Not always. It can often this this fear you're describing can often mean that you're seeing the depth of the teaching because it can be very scary. So it's not a bad thing to feel this fear. So I'm not sure if people on Zoom caught what you're saying. So Brian was saying that he feels a resistance to what I'm saying and a fear and a sense of depersonalization that can occur. And that if he lets himself keep on going into that process, then it's too much and need to sort of stop it. A sense of fear, the unknown. It's very good. Because of a lack of control. Lack of control. Very good. Very good. These are signs of progress. Yes, it doesn't feel like it. It feels like weakness. Yeah. It feels like teetering. It feels like insecurity. Or, or correct me if I'm wrong, please. What does that mean that the, the fear and resistance feel mm. wrong? <laughs> well, it doesn't feel good, does it? That, that, the resistance. The resistance and the fear. Do they feel good? Well, they're very subtle. You know, might even be enjoying the sort of sense of oneness or something, but then something stops me. <laughs> so, well, that's too much. Anyway. Yeah. That's fine. just go with it you don't have to go with it no you can do what you want so brian said shall i go with it can people on zoom hear brian can you hear him you can you can half hear him okay no we we don't have to go in. we we can travel as slowly or as fast as we want to or are able to you are in control of this process you are totally in control of this process. This process, this spiritual process, let's say, this, this process of spiritual realization, of self-realization, of coming home to God, or coming home to our Guru, Bhagavan Ramana, discovering ourself, these are all the same thing. Remember? Knowing God, knowing ourself, knowing Bhagavan, these are all the same thing, because these three are the same. How quickly we want to do that, how slowly we want to do that, is totally in our control. No one can choose how fast or slow you progress. It's totally up to you. It's like, I often say, it's like jumping into a swimming pool. You know, you can dip your toe in first, dip one toe in, then dip another toe in, then, <laughs> you know, test the water, wade in, or you can do what I do, and go straight into deep end, you know, splash. I sometimes don't do that, by the way. I just thought I'd be dramatic. You can do whichever, whatever you want to do. There's never anything to be afraid of in this journey, truly. Lots of fear can come up. See, the key thing here is not logic it's not reason it's not conceptual understanding we all come to see a key thing for spiritual progress and this is not necessarily a popular thing to say this is my experience it doesn't mean it has to be your experience i'm sharing you my experience 
whatever that's worth. The key thing is faith. Faith. You can, if you can have faith in Bhagwan, Bhagwan Ramana and his teachings, or if you don't care for him, you can have faith in yourself, your own nature, your own true nature, your own beingness. Have faith in yourself. If you can have faith in one of these two, this is the best. If you can't have faith in Bhagwan, can't have faith in yourself, your own divine nature, your own inner strength, because we all are infinitely strong, spiritually, inwardly, you know. Outwardly, we're weak. How many creatures are stronger than us physically? So many. And even mentally, probably, probably every single one of us here in this room will crumble if we put enough psychological pressure on us, if you put us in an extreme enough situation. But inwardly, spiritually, we are infinitely strong. Our strength is not of the body or the mind. Not really. Our strength is much deeper than that. It goes beyond birth and death even. Have faith in Bhagavan, Ramana. Have faith in yourself. And to complete the Trinity, if we can't have faith in either of these two things, we can have faith in God. But I say have faith in yourself. If you have faith in yourself, you'll come to realize that you control this spiritual journey. You do. You choose when the teachings come to you. You choose how quickly you want to proceed down them. It's up to you. And there's no, you know, there's no rule. It's what you want. You are the controller. You are the power. I'm in your hands. Everything is in your hands. Everything is in your hands. It's up to you. Again, this is not an appeal to reason. Yeah? Because rationally, I, I don't really have much to stand on. You know, philosophically, it's very difficult to build this case. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not trying to appeal to your reason. I'm trying to appeal, if anything, to that part of you that inner part of you that already knows this, you see? Not the mind that is fearful, that is doubtful, that is questioning, but that inner part of you. That inner part of you, you can, you can commune with it when you're quiet. If you're listening to the chattering voices outside of you, other people's voices, or inside of you, your own voice, your own mind, if you're listening to these voices, both of which are actually external, we call one the outer, one the inner, both of these are external. If you listen to one of these two voices, outer voices or inner voices, other people or our own minds, we, we're not listening to our innermost self. To listen to our innermost self, this is also being called communing with the Holy Spirit within. God's quiet voice within us. This kind of thing. That voiceless voice within us knows. Knows. The external voices, they don't know. They will never know. The mind, other people's minds, they will never know. Tom's mind, your mind, they'll never know. I feel like I'm just sort of developing a discrimination between I mean, what's, what's the real me and what isn't. Mm. Sort of finding a way through that. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. I can say to you, and you don't have to, you don't have to believe me or listen to me, but I'll say to you, the fear will cannot hurt you. The fear cannot hurt you, not one bit. You don't have to be afraid of the fear at all. Bring it on. This is the attitude we, if we can have. Bring it on. Whatever you want to, you can say to the world, whatever you want to bring on to me, bring it on. Come and get me. No bother. I'm not saying you have to do that, but maybe you'll be inspired <laughs> by me. I hope so. Even if just a little bit. <clears throat> But uh, is, it, is it a process to discriminate or is it something else? Why are you asking me? I know why you're, of course, I understand why you're asking me. Brian is asking, Brian was saying that he's learning to discriminate between these voices, between his true self and the false self. And then he asked me a question, is that the process to discriminate? And I rather cruelly said, why are you asking me? And of course, you know, I'm sitting on a chair at the front of a room, you know, so it's totally obvious why he asked me. Um, but I want, and it's fine to ask me, of course, that's what I'm here for. But I want you to know the answer for yourself without having to rely on Tom. Is that what you'd like to do? Is that what you're moved to do? Do you think that's right, Brian? What do you think? Well, I think it's not renouncing of the past. You know? so. Yeah, I think it's that's not me. <laughs> no, no. Past is gone. Brian said it's going to involve renouncing some of the past. So he's got to come to terms with that. Sounds good to me. Well, not some of it, all of it, I think. All of it, you're saying. Okay, yes, sounds good to me. Do you, by past, do you mean the psychological burdens, the emotional burdens you carry? Well, it's what you were saying about the uh, also seemingly inner voices. The inner voices, yes. They're just a clamoring force. <laughs> exactly. Is that what you want to be involved with? So Brian's saying the inner voices that are clamoring all the time. Is that what you want to be involved with for the rest of your life? Do you want? Is that what you'd like? No, Definitely not. not. So you're telling me that you don't want to spend the rest of your life. Let's let me put words into your mouth. You don't want to spend the rest of your life a victim to these inner voices. You don't want to spend the rest of your life listening to these voices torment you. One day they're saying good things. One day they're saying bad things. You know, maybe sometimes some of our voices will be more positive. Some of us will have more positive inner, inner voices, right? Some of us will have more negative inner voices. You know, some of our some of our inner voices will be very sure and self assured, right? confident and sometimes our inner voice will be less confident confused doubtful but these are all our voices these are all the, this is all the concept of the mind do we want to be is that what we want to listen to brian shaking his head saying no so what choice do you have what options do you have well we have from well, I don't feel I have any choice. <laughs> you do have choice. Well, that's how I'm experiencing things at the moment. I don't feel like I have a choice. So, yeah, I would say that you're the same. You do have a choice. Of course you have a choice. But since I'm not entirely sure what I am, so what's having the choice? So... Well, you have a choice. We don't have to know what's having a choice. Right. You know, there are lots of things we don't know. Yeah, you know? most of us are not um, engineering experts, but we still can get into a car or a bus or a train, and and you know, 
trust it's going to transport us or from one place to another or we can drive the car you know most of us don't have degrees in fluid dynamics but we happily you know put petrol or gasoline into the gas tank you know most of us don't understand how half the stuff around us works we still do it all the time we still use it yeah most of us don't understand even how one cell in our body functions and yet we're utilizing all these processes all the time there is a theory that there's no free will and it's a pretty good theory but if it's making you unhappy it's making you feel a victim to life and taking away your agency and your sense of yeah your sense of agency your sense of power this is not good even if it's a box and um, perhaps perhaps but we don't know if it's a fact or not because it's a philosophical view it's not a it's not a scientific well science hasn't answered the question science doesn't give us answers to these questions actually science just gives us theories about predicting things as they'll happen in time so science is just a set of equations current science is just a set of equations that give us gives us models for how to predict the future and we say a scientific theory is in, in quotes correct if it predicts the future as well as we can measure it and so we say that's correct but it doesn't tell us answers to philosophical questions like this necessarily because we might think we've discovered something um fundamental about the nature of reality now but in a hundred years time in a thousand years time in ten thousand years time assuming human beings are still alive and you know there hasn't been an apocalypse or something and our scientific progress is still continuing the science of the future might say, say something completely different just like many people in the 1800s many very distinguished scientists felt that they they had discovered everything that science had to discover they they thought they'd figured out the entire universe with their newtonian physics and then of course you know quantum theory came along special relativity came along and and they were they realized there's a lot, a lot more they have to discover So, actually if you hold on we can come to you jerry yeah i would say this to you brian have faith in yourself you have an inner power within you this is why you're here because there's a part of you that knows that it's not the mind the mind will never know if you spend your days your hours your weeks your months your minutes your seconds listening to the mind that will not help you with this endeavor not with the spiritual endeavor if you renounce these things you don't have to throw away all your past and make it some big thing just moment to moment let go of the thinking mind and, and come back to yourself don't think what is this self i'm coming back to just come back to it intuitively yeah because the mind will often say well how do i do that but that's engaging with the mind again but instead of engaging with the mind if we have faith in ourselves and say to ourselves i know how to come back to myself this is in this is um intuitive knowledge within me how to know god how to know myself this is, is intuitive knowledge within me trust that don't make words and concepts and books and external people your authority look to yourself don't believe that you don't have free will it's a belief in the mind 
that's conceptually rationalized out based on limited data. Actually, the truth is, you have control. Don't give up your agency. This is what I would say. Yeah, that's true. I can, I can see myself choosing not to listen to the mind. Yeah, exactly. Which is a big step. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Brian said he can see himself choosing, choosing not to listen to the mind. And that's a big step. It is a big step. It's a big step. Because then you can discover something deeper. Eventually, we will discover the truth in these teachings that say there's no free will. But we can do it in a beautiful way. One that builds us up before it lets us go. But by that point, we're happy to be let go of. <laughs>